talking about. The BBC, um, obviously founded in a very different time. I was very proud to work there. I thought we made some fantastic programmes, programmes that we otherwise wouldn't have made. Uh, that, that, as I said, those Rethian principles of informing, educating and entertaining. I assume you, you, you feel similarly? I certainly do. I mean, for 21 years, I um, helped to make a programme called That's Life. I remember it well. Well, there you are. You're older than you look, David. Oh, bless uh, you. <laughs> and uh, it, it was quintessentially BBC because it did inform, educate and uh, entertain, I hope. And it was, um, as you said, it was a, a wonderful example of public service broadcasting. But I'm, I mean, not only that, life. if you have a look at things like children in need and comic relief, if you look at the Queen's funeral coverage where everybody in the nation, it appears, turned to the BBC and were rewarded with brilliant coverage. There's something very special about only having an allegiance to working for the viewer. You don't have to please shareholders or proprietors. It's, it's the viewers you have to please. Can I just ask you, I mean, clearly the BBC makes some fantastic programmes. Uh, some might say it has spread itself too thinly recently. Clearly, the, the media landscape has changed dramatically, as we know. The fact is there are many other services, such as Amazon, uh, Netflix and so on. Is the BBC still relevant? I believe it is. I mean, as I said, the funeral of the Queen proved it. Indeed, last night when uh, we were going to the, um, well, the absence of the Prime Minister in the House of Commons, it was the BBC that um, put that centre of BBC Two, um, cancelled the, uh, the schedule programmes and put that on instead. And we turned to it for information. So I think it's still extremely relevant. But, but it has a challenge, a huge challenge. It has to stay in touch with what the viewers want and need. And my particular gripe is that chasing the young, and frankly, if 16 to 24 year olds are watching television, something's wrong with them because they're always doing <laughs> more than that. They've really not respected people of my generation who are its most loyal customers. So BBC, Beware of disrespecting uh, older viewers. I, yeah. I the young. I, I couldn't agree more. I, I'm deeply concerned about them chasing younger viewers. Of course, older people tend to have a little more time. They tend to be considered viewers as well. I'd like to bring in William Clouston now, if I may, who is the leader of the SDP. Uh, good morning, William. Morning, David. Uh, very good to see you. Haven't seen you for ages either. Um, <laughs> but let me just ask you, William, you're less keen on the BBC. Yeah, I think um, obviously this is a vitally important national institution and we want to support it, but it has lost its way. Um, if you look at the Rethian principles and the original charter from 1927, um, its, its, its job is to inform and ed educate and entertain. But if you say look at the informed side, um, there is a, a, a known uh, political bias, a liberal left bias in uh, BBC reporting. I think there's a lot of groupthink in BBC News and you only have to look at public perceptions in the surveys of what the public think of it uh, to, to see that. There is a falling sense that the BBC is impartial and um, the viewing figures of things like Newsnight and BBC News itself sort of show it. So I think uh, it can't be complacent on that. Um, as regards informing us and entertaining us and educating us, I think the other aspects that are important are you know, do, does the BBC um, do high culture anymore? Is it serious? I think there's a there's a little bit of a problem there. I mean, for instance, would it make uh, Kenneth Clark's civilization now? I don't think it would. It would probably be more likely to criticize Western civilization and celebrate it. Uh, would it produce um, architectural programs that, that were produced by Ian Nairn in the 70s? I don't think it would. So I think it it has lost its way. And just to pick up a point that Esther made there, about lack of representation or rep you know representing the hinterland i think it's true I, I think it has a preoccupation with youth and another major problem is that it's too metropolitan um obviously most of its production uh, most of its center of gravity is in london but out there in the rest of sort of what i would call hinterland britain i don't think it represents that quite as well so that's a major challenge uh, esther how would you respond to that 
Well, I think the BBC is very conscious of not being metropolitan. The funny thing is that when I was working for 39 years in the BBC, there were a lot of the production team um, worked in London, but came from elsewhere. In fact, most of the people I worked with came from outside London and brought with them a real understanding of where they were brought up and where their families lived. So I think um, impartiality is interesting too, because um, I can quite see that certain political parties might feel underrepresented, um, whether it's the far right or the far left. But um, they do do their very best, and sometimes to an absurd degree. I mean, the climate change scientists would say it's absolutely ridiculous that in the early days when they were trying to alert the nation to the peril we all face with climate change, the BBC felt they had to wheel in some loony who happened to take the view that it was all caused by astrological zodiac figures or something else in order to provide balance. I think the BBC is actually very conscious of this and aware of their responsibility. But I wonder whether you feel, William, that, for example, the coverage of the Queen's funeral was out of kilter and they should have had more Republicans who would attack them. <laughs> it, it's, a really good, it's a really good point. William, I just want to pick... Well, you can answer that, but also at the same time, I do, I do agree. I think there's a real issue in uh, the political reporting and I, I, I feel that they have lost some of their sense of being impartial. For smaller parties like yours, an important party, do you struggle to get your message across? Is that a problem? Well, we get far more coverage on, on this television station and on GB News and some others than we do on the BBC. I think I've been a leader for four years. I've done about five or six interviews on the BBC. It's much more difficult to get on, uh, for sure. No, I think there's... I mean, I think the, the political bias... I think they mean well, probably some of them, but, say, the Brexit vote uh, proved the point. I mean, you <laughs> struggle to find a person in Broadcasting House that actually voted Brexit, and that's the problem. It's not, I think they're too inclined to think diversity is, uh, you know, having lots of people of different backgrounds uh, racially, but not of not of political outlook and opinion. There is a lack of viewpoint diversity. I think there's also a class issue, actually, as, as Esther said. Uh, to answer Esther's question on the funeral, I think the funeral uh, was, was the BBC at its best. I think it was absolutely magnificent, and it brought the nation together. Well, they possibly could have had a, a, a bigger Republican voice, but frankly, most decent Republicans didn't think it was the time to make their case, and I think they're probably right. Esther, um, how does the BBC survive, sorry, very quickly, how does it survive, how does it ensure that it keeps core services? I think it will change, I think the government has has an agenda. Well, Nadine um, is no longer in post, so she, without weeping deeply into her handkerchief, <laughs> so we'll see what is decided, but it's very easy to demolish a great institution. It's very easy to knock a cathedral to the ground, for example, or to shoot a figure of Buddha out of a mountainside. It's very hard to recreate it. So I would say, beware what you wish for, be careful because the Wicked Witch may make that come true. And <laughs> you never know what you've got until it's gone. Very wise words. William? Yeah, I think that's right. I think we, I mean, we have a, a policy proposal in the SDP to get rid of the licence fee, which I think is, is a bit of a, a, an equitous tax, actually, and, and is not necessary. But no, I think the BBC should be reformed. I think, you know, we had John Cleese uh, speaking at the SDP conference uh, you know, a few days ago, and he, he made the point, actually, that the BBC wouldn't commission Python now because it's not diverse enough. I think it's worth no. saving. I think oh, you've no, got no, to... No, that's, that's not true. That's absolutely... Well, that's what he said. That's, no, I'm just reporting, Esther, I'm just reporting what I John know. said. He, he, he said they wouldn't... He I said know. they wouldn't commission it. You take it up with him if you don't agree He's with done. it. But, well, He's maybe... OK, hang on, Esther. <laughs> just finish, William. But the point yeah. I'm making, I, I, I'm rather on Esther's side. I think it is worth saying. <laughs> it's, it, it's rather, it's, it's an important institution, but it needs to take these issues of political bias and seriousness. It, it needs to look at those, and and uh, and I think you know you only have to look at the surveys to see that it isn't working at the moment. Uh, William and Esther, thank you very much indeed for.